Hello and welcome to another session of quantitative technique videos at edupediaworld.com, your most favored portal for online education. In our previous session, we had started with the time series analysis and we had seen its definition, uh, its components and what basically is time series analysis and how it is done. This session, we shall move on with the same uh, topic that is time series analysis and we'll see the measurement of various components to begin with we'll start with the measurement of secular trend we have different methods of measuring trend and some of the principal methods are given below the, the simplest the easiest method is the graphical or freehand curve method then we have the method of averages under which we have the method of selected points we have the method of semi averages and we have the method of moving averages further we have the mathematical trend under which we have the method of least square and by using the method of least square apart from fitting the linear trend we can also fit parabolic or exponential trend we will only be seeing the linear trend for now and so we will basically be looking at the graphical method all the three method of averages and in the method of least square we will use the fitting of linear trend for now in this session we will begin with the graphical method move on with the method of averages and see the first two method of averages that is the method of selected points and the method of semi averages in the subsequent videos we'll see the moving average and the linear trend methods so let's begin with the graphical method graphical method is the simplest method to study the trend here the time series data is plotted on a graph by taking the time on the x-axis and the other variable on the y-axis. A smooth line or curve is drawn through the plotted points which would represent the trend of the given data. Very simple. We will take an example, we will see a numerical example and understand how this plotting is done. Well here we have a data. Uh, where we see that we have the data of 16 years of say the imports of fertilizers which are given in millions of tons okay in the year 2000 the import was of 1100 million tons in year 2001 the import was of 1359 in the year 2002 it was 1015 million tons and so on so we have a data of 16 years we will be plotting this on a graph graphical sheet and the plot will be something like this yeah so here we have you see in the uh, x-axis we have the year uh, the years the first year that is the year 2000 the second year and that way up to the 15th year this is our x-axis x axis where we have the time period the time in our case it is the year okay and here in the y-axis we have the import of fertilizers in millions of tons fine so we see in the first year it's 1100 which is here the second year it is 1300 and something and so on so we have the data and when we plot these are the values in the different years and we join them using a smooth curve we'll get something like this okay now this is the actual data which we have so this is our actual import of fertilizer in the uh, 16 years if we have to get the trend of this graphically it's very simple once we have plotted this graph we simply draw a straight line uh, through these points and we assume that this is the most representative of the line of the curve so when we draw a straight line through this this is our trend line okay 
a line passing through these points. Of course, when different people draw this, they, they may get different lines. For example, I have taken this as a trend line. Maybe somebody else may come and may, you know, take from here something like this. You know, somebody else may say that no, it's, it's the, this should be the uh, line which best fit the value and so on. But of course, that that is one of the drawbacks. This is subjective, but again, it's very simple and we just have to draw a straight line through the points. Okay, so this is our measure of secular trend. Looking at its uh, advantages and disadvantages, we see that the merits are first it is very simple. We see that there is no mathematical calculation. It's simply the plotting the, da uh, the data on a graphical sheet and then drawing a line through it. Sex next, we see that it's flexible. Uh, once, once we see the you know, rigid methods of mathematical trend and others, we'll see that this is very simple and flexible, easily done. And third is that if the observations are relatively stable, the trend can easily be approximated by this method. Now, this time we see, we saw that you know there was lots of fluctuation. But if the fluctuations are less, if the data is you know relatively stable, then we will easily get a trend line without doing much, without taking any effort. Okay, but the demerits are that the first it is subjective. Now the value of the trend by different people could be different, as we have seen just now, and that. Uh, it's not very reliable. Reason: the prediction made by this method is of little significance. Okay, because we because of the subjectivity or the subjective nature of this method. Okay, so that was your uh, graphical or freehand curve me method. Next, let's move on to the method of selected points. This is the first method under the method of averages. In the method of selected points, we take two points and these are considered to be the most representative of the data. Or usually we take the uh, two normal points and these two are joined by a straight line to get the secular trend. Okay, so instead of drawing the line through the points anywhere, this time, you know, we are uh, fixing up two points, any two points and we join them. Which two points? Again, there is subjectivity in that. It could be any two points which we think are the most representative of the data or which we feel are normal, you know, which are not uh, the extreme points or which doesn't have much fluctuation. This again is subjective like the previous one as we have seen and different person may have different opinion about the representative points. And further, only linear trend can be determined by this point. So let's look at an example and see how can we do this. And let's take the same, you know, uh, data. We have the graph, you know, as uh, we have seen previously. Let's take any two points uh, here. Let's say we are taking the first and the last point. So if I take my first and the last point as my representative, and if I join these two points, you know, I'll get the trend something like this. This is going to be my trend line. Trend line using the method of selected points. Okay, now somebody else may come and say that no, these are extreme points. Let's not take them. Let's take, you know, say for example, the second point and say the second last or the last point. Then, of course, our trend value are going to change. It's going to be something like this. Uh, maybe somebody, uh, and this can go as weird as, you know, if we take, say, somebody feels that these two points are the most representative or most normal, we can understand how weird the trend value could go. Of course, uh, by experience, a person knows that, you know, these are not uh, the most representative. It is one of these points, say one of these points here, or say the points here, you know, which are falling in the in between. So again, but there's subjectivity and it 
could lead to you know at times uh, error of large magnitude so improving upon this let's move on and next uh, let's take the method of semi averages the second method in the method of averages here the given time series data are divided into two equal parts and the arithmetic mean of the value of each part is computed so a little improvement this time what we do is we divide the whole set of data into two equal parts and we take the average or the arithmetic mean of both these parts when you do that each semi average is calculated uh, is ca calculated as paired with the center of the time period to uh, to fit this part and the two semi averages are joined by a straight line to get the trend let's see how it can be done let's take the same set of data and this time we are doing with the method of semi averages Here what we will do is we will divide our set of data into two equal parts. We have totally 16 data. So let's take the first eight here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. First eight here and the remaining eight on this side. Let's take the average of both of these. Let's go to our Excel sheet where we have our actual data. We'll take the average of these eight data. And we know that this this will coincide if we center it it will coincide with uh, with 2000 in between 2003 and 2004 so let's add them up here this is going to be you know the sum of or let's take okay let's take the sum sum of all of these one two three four five six seven and eight okay and then I need to find the average average would be this value divided by 8 okay so average is 1372 similarly let's take the average of these 8 say here okay so we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 the average of these 8 would be the value here divided by 8 okay so we have these two averages here let's plot these two values 1372 and this will coincide with the middle of these eight data let me you know mark these eight with a color okay and these eight with another color fine so we have now this will coincide with the year uh, to between 2003 and 2004 that is between the fourth and the fifth year and this will coincide with uh, with the in between 2011 and 12 that is our 12th and 13th year okay so let's mark them between fourth and here we will have the first one which is 1 3 13 72 now we have our 12 13 72 will come somewhere over here okay let me mark this 13 72 somewhere over here and the other data is 15 73 15 73 will be between 12th and 13th data somewhere here 15 this is our 16 so 15 will be 15 73 will be somewhere here okay now I have these two data as our semi averages the semi average one let me call this as my semi average one and this as our semi average two if I join these two lines with a straight with a smooth straight line I'll get my linear trend linear trend and this is of course we'll be joining them with a with a straight line using scale and pencil so this is our linear trend of this data okay 
so subjectivity has been eliminated this time but we still have some problems okay what do we do in case of odd number of observations well in case of odd, odd number we still divide the data into two equal parts by dropping the middlemost observation let's say we have say nine values we will take the first four and the last four we will leave out the fifth data okay so that way we get equal number of data in two equal parts to obtain the two semi averages which and these two semi averages are joined by a straight line to get the trend what are the advantages and disadvantages of this the merits the first that again this is very simple we see that we do not have you know much of mathematical calculation as we will be having in the other methods which we'll see very shortly then it's subjective this time you know the previous two methods uh, had this problem that they were subjective this time it's subjective and anyone applying this method to a given set of data will get identical trend value and the demerits the first is that it only gives linear trend irrespective of whether it exists or not we do not know if the actual trend is linear or nonlinear irrespective of that this will only give us a linear uh, trend second that it's a crude method of measuring trend since we do not know whether the effect of other components is completely eliminated or not so we still have problem of course these problems were there even with the previous ones we assumed that they are linear and we assumed that you know all the other components are not existing and so we say that it is a crude method of measuring and due to these you know uh, complications we will have to move on further and use other complex methods like the moving average and the linear trend using the uh, the method which we have uh, seen that is will fit the uh, linear trend using the uh, least square method we shall see these two methods in our upcoming videos uh, keep watching edupedia world videos thank you